Dude, how you doing? Mikey of Cold Chamber in the building! Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> hell yeah. What up, bro? How you doing? We are doing fantastic, sir. How are you today? Oh, I'm just battling the uh, the old rat race in Southern California. Um, but other than that, everything's great, man. What what part of Southern California are you in? Uh, right now, I'm currently pulled over on the side of the road <laughs> in Santa Clarita. Got gotcha. you. Hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Well, dude, thank you, thank in, in you for between, joining. In between job sites, of course, of course. So, uh, big announcement just happened recently with the with the Vegas show coming out, dude. We're excited for it. This is the the first big get back together show, I believe. Uh, what is it like getting in the room with all with all the old bandmates again? Um, you know, obviously we have a, a twenty five year uh, history, so there's obviously uh, you know some familiar some familiar stuff with uh you know all the stuff we've been through but this time around man it's it's completely different man everyone's older and and uh you know got families and and so much other things going on in their lives and careers that uh there's just a a, a different vibe now um i don't want to say the cliche of uh it's fresh and new again because we've said that multiple times <laughs> um but uh you know, it's it's just different, man. There's there's a different level of respect, and uh, you know, it's it's we became friends over the last time. Um, you know, we stopped playing, and uh, we, me and Des, especially kept in contact a lot, and uh, you know, we developed a really good friendship. So uh, it's just it's starting out a lot differently this time. Um, obviously, me and Meigs are are super tight and always have been. Um, super tight. So that relationship's always. Yeah, I mean that sounded super gay, but cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, it's it's a it's it, it's a it's a it's a good feeling, man. And uh, you know these shows that were these selective shows that were playing, um, you know, even if I wasn't in the band, you know, the amount of bands on the bill that like I grew up on and you know influenced everything I do musically are on these shows. It's it's pretty remarkable, man. When when you were when you were younger, who was who was a drummer that you idolized that that you wanted your your style of playing to represent or made you in general just pick up the sticks and practice even harder? Um, well, I'm I'm kind of obscure in that sense. I've never idolized drummers. I, obviously, there's drummers that are insanely talented and good, but I always liked the concept of being in a band and not the uh, the individual side of things. Um, the reason I started playing is because my older brother played, um, oh. so I just naturally picked it up. But you know, I, I'm never, I'm never like a let's go see a, a drum solo type guy. I like, I like bands, man, and you know, bands get you through emotions. Uh, a drum solo does not. So I've always, I've always been on that side of the fence with things. Um, you know, you listen to bands like Nirvana when Nirvana came out. It's very simple, but you know, change the world. Bands like Rage, very simple, but change the world. And those those kind of a, the bands that that bring out the emotion in you is uh, why I fell in love with playing in general. But you know, to answer your question, I like I like being in a band. I don't really like the the drummer side of things. Hey, Mikey. <laughs> speaking of emotion, uh, I mean, obviously, I've seen you play many times. Um, you hit so fucking hard. So, as a drummer, how how does that like? Does it make you super exhausted after a show? Do you have to like kind of work out a little bit before, get a little bit of pump up, or like just the passion that you put behind the kit? It, it dude, it, it's like huge. Like, explain like why you hit so fucking hard. Well, first let's address why your voice is so deep on the phone right now. That's <laughs> Whatever. <pretty crazy>. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sound like Barry White, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, as as far as you know, the drumming live and and putting everything into it, it's just something that naturally started happening. The more the more I toured, and uh, you know, touring with bands like Seven Dust early on, and you know, Morgan's just a, probably one of the best drummers on the planet. 
Um, and just, it, it became like this friendly competition of, of, of going off. And then, you know, that, that kind of relates to, to the aggression of the music and, um, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a religious experience on stage. Um, there is a, a lot of cool down time and, and now that I'm old as shit, I'm going to have to do like a, a five hour warm up to even get ready for these shows. But yeah, man, it's a, it's kind of an out of body ex- experience. Um, for me personally, I go into a different world. Um, and, uh, yeah, the come down is crazy. Uh, it's almost, it's almost like a drug of some sort, you know, you got to come down off of it and, uh, recover and all that stuff so as far as what i'm thinking when i play i have no clue what i'm thinking it just it just happens man shock the monkeys obviously absolute classic from you guys i'm wondering if you have any really cool aussie stories that you can share about your experience working with oh, them. good <laughs> lord man it's we, we had we have so much history back in the day i mean there there was a moment where i was basically living at Sharon Osborne's house. Um, you know, there's, there's so many crazy stories, um, during those times with, you know, our band and, and when she represented us and, you know, all the opportunities she gave us and, and, uh, you know, my, my favorite story, I mean, it's not a good story, but the most <laughs> memorable one is, is my dog. I had my dog at a hotel and I got hit by a car and ran over Oh no! called Sharon and said my, my dog got this this was you know 20 something years ago and I called Sharon and said hey my my dog got hit so she sent her her car over to pick me up from the hotel and went by the time we got to her house in Beverly Hills uh her dog had jumped in the pool and drowned on the same fucking day oh and my gosh. uh you know it was, it was devastating this is this is when Jack and Kelly they were really young I was I was young myself um, and we proceeded to go to the Beverly center, which is a mall in California and into the pet store. And Ozzy and Sharon bought me a new dog, which I named, uh, Shazi for Sharon and Ozzy. So I was in a mall with Ozzy, which is pretty bizarre. If you think about it, <laughs> I bet you guys were mobbed so, uh, left and yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they have their security. No one gave a shit about me, but of course, you know, Ozzy's Ozzy. But that, that's that's probably the most memorable thing. Of course, there's there's a lot of stuff that I can't talk about. So from those times. <laughs> Speaking of stuff that you can't talk about, but I'm hoping you can give us just a little teaser tidbit. Because you guys have all the shows coming up, is there is there talks of a single or something more than that possibly in the future? Well, there's there's a lot of stuff we can't talk about. You know, the music industry. I understand. I understand. Completely fucking changed completely changed since since last time i did it and uh you know everything is planned so far in advance now um that you know negotiations happen and and all the all the stuff that management takes care of that i want no part of um so yeah we we have we have we have plans for stuff right now we're just doing uh, the two shows that are announced um but you know it's it's an evolving process and uh the the demand for for not only us but all these other old fucks to come out of retirement is has been tremendous um so i'm a i'm i'm gonna go out there and say uh there, there's gonna be things happening cool hey mike I, i've never asked you this question yes what yes what do you want yes. what is your favorite song to play live i mean you've got a, a good catalog and you know especially with the, the the first album came out and everybody loves dark days and like what is your like your go to like fuck we got to play this song uh i mean there's obviously the songs that everybody wants to hear but what um, do you like but it, it's all the same to me man it's I, I i don't i don't take any songs off when i play so it's it's literally all the same to me but you know you you like you like the crowd participation of of loco and sway and and those those songs um and you know our, our set times are usually shorter um so we can't play every fucking song we wrote um so you know but but for me personally there is no like um let's get to the fifth song because it's my favorite song not like robo you know? so you can take a, a pause and you can breathe in between as each you know hit because robots you know robot robot has became like a, a huge like fan fave and especially when des gets up there with the megaphone and, and with the lights and stuff it, it's just so 
like you get the crowd into it, just the bomb, bomb, and you're just waiting for it. Yeah, I mean, like, just because it just because it's a slower tempo doesn't mean it's any less, uh, you know, exhausting for me. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I pick and choose my my spots during the set to to try to catch a breath. Um, so it's 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 different at different times, man. Certain stages are you know fucking 150 degrees on stage and certain certain stages aren't so it's 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 an ever-evolving process man but you know there there, there's no favorite for me i i I like sway a lot because the crowd participation um and i know that's the last song so i can actually uh catch a breath afterwards but other than that man it's 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 one big haze for me when i'm playing i'm just gonna pepper you with them you know i apologize but what about working with uncle al that's uh that's Dez's boy, man. It's uh pretty pretty crazy, man. Uh, when I was in, fuck, when I just got into high school, whatever year that was, fucking 1902. Uh, that was my favorite band on the planet. Like I could not get enough of fucking ministry. And then, you know, fast forward and and Dez calls me and and everyone else and he's like, yeah, I got Al on a song. I was like, you know, say what? So we go to Dez's house and you know my my kid was was really young at the time and we have a picture of al holding my baby boy and you know al's got 140 piercings in his face it's just the best picture <laughs> on planet earth and my kid was just mesmerized by him man but he's he's a cool dude and uh he lived up to all the expectations of of what you think he is man he's he's a talented dude he's been in the business for so long and uh you know, he's, he started a whole wave of music and is still continuing to do that. And there's nothing but respect there. And, uh, you know, it, it was, a uh, it was, I, I was kind of, when I first went there and saw him in Desa studio, I was, I was in shock and I've, I've seen him many times in the past, but it's just diff- a different feeling when you know, he's working on your song. Um, right. so, you know, all, all that kind of shit that we've been through, you know, from the Sharon Osbourne and Ozzy stuff to, to that, it's it's all surreal experiences. And if you think back to when I was fucking 16 or whatever, listening to. It's just crazy, man, to even think about. And, you know, the fact that I survived all those years. Question again. Um, so with the Vegas show in Blue Ridge just being announced uh, a couple weeks ago, are you guys going to do any in-between shows? Are you going to do like or just do a fly in to each event? And, and obviously there's stuff that you can't talk about. But can we see more of Cold Chamber if people aren't in that area? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what the future holds. But those two shows were, were fly, flying in, playing and flying out. We're not we're not doing surprise shows. We're not doing. People were asking me if if we're doing practice shows, and I was like, "What the fuck is a pra- what the fuck is a practice show? <laughs> a warm up like, show or <laughs> yeah, warm up show is called rehearsal. Like I don't know what the right. fuck a warm up show is, but <laughs> you know, and and you know, all of us being, I don't want to say veterans of the business, but we, I guess we're veterans of the business makes us sound old as shit. But um, uh, you know, there there is no warm up shows and and that kind of stuff. We rehearse. You know, we we rehearse crazy right before the show and, uh, you know, go through production and all that all that kind of shit that comes with it these days. And uh, we just hit it hard, man. And, and you know, right before Vegas, we're going to hit it extremely hard and uh, get it to where it needs to be. Um, and, uh, you know, as of right now, at this moment in time, that's that's all we have going on. So but, you know, the music industry is an ever evolving uh business and uh we'll see what happens man what's uh you said earlier that the the music industry has changed a ton since you've been in it and it totally has but uh what do you what do you think this is a primarily local band show bands that are trying to be in your position mikey what what what's a piece of advice you would share for a band that's like just getting started right now what should they focus on in the way that the music industry works now well, I mean, I'm I've, I'm kind of ignorant to a lot of things because once I started my construction business, I completely shut off the music industry, want to know part of it. And uh, I was just focusing on my family and my business and, and getting that off the ground. And, and it took off and, and uh, you know, it takes up a ton of my time. But I do know a lot of people in the music industry and and, 
you know, the the biggest complaints from them is, you know, major labels now, if that that's even a fucking thing, it, they want you to do all the marketing for them. You know, they want you to do all the social media yourself, all of that stuff. And when we first came out, there was no such thing as the fucking Internet. So what we did is we toured our asses off opening for bigger bands and you try to get some of their fans. You know, we were blessed enough to tour with Pantera for, I mean, close, close to a year straight for a while there. And, you know, Megadeth and all these bands that were selling out arenas. And we were like, you know, saying if we could just get 10% of the fans every night, you know, that's how we're going to grow. And, um, you know, even before that, you're standing outside on Sunset Boulevard, you know, passing out flyers to your show. Now with social media, um, it's a it's a totally different animal. And also, you know, you put out a record, there's no really no such thing as record sales unless you're Taylor Swift and shit. So, you know, as far as that, I, I would say stay away from, you know, there's there's bands that'll sign deals just to say they have a record deal and, you know, take it from someone who's had multiple record deals. A lot of them aren't what they appear. And I'm sure every musician on planet Earth that's been through it, um, all of them, you hear about them trying to get out of their record deals. And those are those are record deals where they're actually making a ton of money. Now, mm. record deals, they're doing the 360 deals where they want to take half of your touring money and all this other shit. And the label's actually not doing anything for you. I don't even know if it's beneficial. It, it almost seems like it's better just to get out there independently. And then if it takes off, you could partner up with a label or something. You know what I mean? It's it, it, it's a different animal. If you can get the right management into place that's connected, the management should give you good advice and 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 uh, point you down the right path. You know, the the day the days of just jumping on a label and and doing what the label tells you to do, um, those days are gone. And they didn't they didn't work back in the day. So I'm I'm assuming they don't work anymore. I know we only have time for a couple more. I want to ask a fun one, and then I'm going to let Eric ask one or two. But uh, let's do a fun one. Do you recall the worst show Cole Chamber ever had? <laughs> Everything went wrong at this show. Can you talk about it? Oh, I mean, we've we've broken up on stage before, so we've had some crazy shows. But I will say it's still uh. one, of, one of my favorite shows we played. We were, I think we're out with, downset or some shit like way like 98 97 98 something like that and we got to the show in maine we all the way in maine and we were playing an airport bar and this was like not not like lax airport like a tiny you know cessna airport and we literally played there was two people at the show both of them had their backs to us because they were actually at the bar they weren't there to see us so we we did full makeup, full intro, full everything. Came out on stage, jumped around. Not one person was there to see us. And I, I still, it's one of my funnest memories because we still, you know, put everything into it. And, uh, and uh, you know, but as far as crowd participation, there wasn't one fucking person there to see us. <laughs> so sure. I guess I guess you would call that a warm-up show. Back there we in the go. Day. There we go. Uh, but as, as far as like shit going wrong, oh, we've had everything go wrong. Uh, I could, there's hundreds of shows that, you know, guitars go, everything goes out. We've, we played on the last run, 2015, we were playing in, uh, Santiago, Chile and the whole power of the venue cut off on our second song, the whole thing blacked out and they had to restart the whole power and we had to start over. So it still happens to this day. For sure. Spaz, uh, what would be your final question? Let's see, Mike. I, I got to throw you a softball here. Let me see. I had it and I, I forgot it. Hang on a second. I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. Did you ask him about the thing? Did you ask him about the thing that you that your son mailed him? Yeah, he he's got it on his wall. That's cool. Uh, yeah, he, I think it's right before Streamlabs went out. Um, okay, I'm gonna throw a a thing for the drummers. Um, so when you brought us backstage, when you came up on the Rivals tour in, at Ace of Spades in Sacramento, I noticed your drum kit. I'm like, bro, why are your toms fucking backwards? Why do you do that? Uh, because I need the toms low enough to be right above my kick drum. And if, when I put them in order, the toms were sitting too high. And then um, I just got used to it. Actually, what, after I did it, I noticed that... Um, 
the drummer of uh, Smashing Pumpkins was named Jimmy Chamberlain. Yep. He would he was he would do it back in the day, and I always thought it was super cool. It almost sets the toms up like roto toms. Right. So when when I do fills in order, I have to do it like a roto tom and go left. I don't I don't I don't just go left left to right. It's all over the place. So it was just something I did uh, in the middle of a tour one time because I thought everything wasn't feeling right, and and it's just stuck since then. Well, the photo that we have <clears throat> on the display, I, I don't know where you were, because if you were overseas, I remember when uh, the Rivals tour, you would put like the uh, the country's flag on the kick drum. Uh, it, it just brings me back to a, a funny story when you were up here in Sacramento and we were up in the green room and you're, you know, getting warmed up before you go on. And I'm like, bro, are you doing rudiments? You looked at me like I was fucking retarded. And I'm like, oh, I don't do warm ups before a show. And I've got the video, dude. I, it's so funny because you looked at me like I was dumb. <laughs> and I was like. Maybe <laughs> practice. You guys are old buddies. Yeah, yeah, man. It's uh, you know, each each show's different, man. It's I don't have like this exact ritual before I play. Each each show's different, and sometimes I need to start getting ready super early. Sometimes it just kind of happens. Meigs, on the other hand, he needs uh, like fucking eighteen hours to get ready for a show. He's like fucking Paul Stanley. <laughs> He's got to get a so. nap in before, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got the photos to prove it, too. Oh, my God. Is there, is there one place, and this will be my last question, and we'll let you go, Mike, and we appreciate your time. Is there, is there any place in the world that you never got to tour, a particular country that you, that you had circled on the map, but just never kind of, you guys just never ended up getting there, that you'd like to eventually play someday? Um, with, with Coal Chamber, man, we never, ever went to japan we were supposed to a ton of times and it just never happened and uh that's one place i would like to go i've been to every single state except alaska we never played alaska so i need to hit alaska one time before before my run is up um but yeah man japan is is something i would love to see and you know now that i got my my kid and, and wife traveling with me that's that's something we want to do it with as a family even if i'm not on tour so um but yeah, before that was Australia, but we went down to Australia, which was absolutely insane and fantastic. And you know, we've done we've done Europe a gazillion times and South America and stuff like that. But I would say number one on my list would probably be Japan. Hell yeah. Well, dude, we appreciate your time. You're an absolute legend. We're stoked about the the Vegas show and the uh the Blue Ridge show that those are both gonna be ginormous. We're excited, we hope, for some new tunes to come out in the future. And uh, we really appreciate your time, man. You didn't have to do this, but you did. So thank you so much. No, it's all good, man. I appreciate it. And uh, time will tell uh, with the new music and all that stuff. We shall see. Excellent. Mikey Cox of Cold Chamber. Hell yeah. Have a fantastic day, brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.